Okay, welcome to this video. I'm James and this is the video going over the condensed version of all the B4 broadcast lens tests that I did in round one. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, uh, there'll be a link down in the description. There's a whole playlist of longer tests of all these lenses if you're interested. Okay, so we'll start off with an abridged uh, image quality results for each of the lenses. Uh, so the important things to take away from that are no matter what, uh, using an optically correcting adapter uh, produces much better results than not using an optically corrected adapter. In Super 16, there is a significant difference between using an optical correcting adapter and not using an optical correcting adapter. Uh, so if you're using a lens in Super 16 um, and want the best out of it, uh, definitely use an optical correcting adapter to adapt your lens. I'll throw a comparison up on the screen, optical correcting adapter on one side, non-optical correcting adapter on the other side in Super 16. You can see very obvious uh, that the optical correcting adapter makes it much more usable wide open. And this is regardless of HD or SD, um, that hazy and severe spherical aberrations and chromatic aberrations are just present when not using an optical, optically corrected adapter. I wonder how many times I'm going to have to say that during this video. Um, so without correcting all those things in Super 16, uh, you just get terrible results uh, without it. But using an optically corrected adapter in Super 16 uh, does amazing things. I would say for SD lenses, uh, you can use them wide open and get usable results, but for best results, f2.8 and beyond are uh, really, really good results, and they're razor sharp at f4. Um, so that's SD lenses. HD lenses um, with an optical correcting adapter in Super 16 uh, perform excellently from wide open. You can use an HD lens from fully wide open with an optically correcting adapter. I would not recommend using a B4 lens in Super 16 without an optically corrected adapter. Um, you have to stop down to f4 to f8 to even get a tiny bit of clarity in the image. Um, and it's just not worth it at that point. Whereas this one you can use wide open and still get clarity and sharpness. 2.8 to get really nice uh, detail and HD from wide open. Uh, you don't want to be eating into your low light, um, particularly because when not using an optically corrected adapter in Super 16, um, the spherical aberrations haziness still doesn't fully go away until about f8. Um, and it's just not worth using a lens at f8 all the time. So onto the Super 35 abridged results next. Uh, basically, I was expecting it to be very similar to Super 16 results with that really big spread between optically corrected adapters and non-optically corrected. Um, and I was very surprised to note that in Super 35, uh, because we use the doubler to get image coverage of the sensor, uh, the doubler must correct some of the artifacts and spherical aberration um, that's present in the Super 16 tests. Um, so the non-optically corrected adapting test uh, was actually half decent. Um, I still wouldn't use it as I can still see a significant difference um, in the two with optically corrected. Uh, I'll show you on the screen, optically corrected on one side, non-optical on the other side. Uh, and basically it is much better um, in Super 35 non-optically corrected than its non-optically corrected Super 16 counterpart but even still you can get out more image quality by using an optical corrected adapter and the doubler as well together um, so yeah that was interesting i was expecting um, it just to be a complete hazy gauzy mess as well uh, to, as well like the super 16 results without an optical corrector but um yeah there you go um, if you were in a pinch and you had a super 35 uh, sensor camera, you could get away with uh, 2.8, f4, f8 uh, without an optical correcting adapter and using the doubler to correct some of the image and get uh, sensor coverage. But my recommendation is to use an optical correcting adapter 
in conjunction with the doubler for best results. So that's an interesting find that the doubler does somewhat of a correction. It's not a proper correction. As you can see, there's still some weird stuff going on. Um, it just clears up some of that haziness, but you can still see there's lots of spherical aberration there and lots of weird stuff going on. Uh, and it's not quite as sharp as using an optically corrected adapter with the doubler. So that's the condensed version of the image quality results. Um, the best image quality goes to Super 16 uh, with an optical correcting adapter. That was the best image quality overall. Next best was Super 35 with an optically correcting adapter and using the doubler for coverage. After that was Super 35 uh, using the doubler for coverage was third. And then um, Super 16 without an optically correcting adapter was terrible, but it was fourth of four. <laughs> so it was last. Um, I would not recommend doing that at all. And now overall, uh, in terms of image quality for each of the lenses, uh, the two thirds inch uh, HD B4 cinema zoom here, the 21 by Canon, uh, it won image quality hands down. As expected, it is the highest quality lens in all the tests. Um, but surprisingly, uh, sharpness was pretty on par with the SD lenses. The thing that it won out in uh, considerably was the lack of chromatic aberration. Uh, so this one had by far the least chromatic aberration and performed the best overall in image quality. But the SD lenses in terms of sharpness uh, from 2.8, they weren't really that far off. And if I was just after uh, sharps and detail and I didn't mind a little bit of chromatic aberration uh, at like wide open and 2.8, um, and it's really not that much chromatic aberration, um, then yeah, I'd be happy using SD lenses as well. And just to back that up, the main lens I've been using is an SD lens, um, just because it's got that servo zoom and doubler, uh, whereas the cinema version uh, in HD doesn't have those sorts of things. So just uh, preferring to use an SD lens just for some quality of life improvements. Something I need to add to the image quality in Super 35 and Super 16 is that if you are shooting Super 35 and using the doubler for coverage, obviously you don't get the uh, doubler to extend the zoom range. Whereas in Super 16 with an optically correcting adapter, um, you're actually able to use the doubler to double the zoom range as well. Some other interesting things to note in the testing, uh, some of the older SD lenses, particularly the ones uh, we have to pull up and then rotate the macro switch. When you are using the doubler for Super 35 mode, uh, you cannot engage the macro switch, whereas in Super 16 you can. The doubler must lock out the macro switch on those older uh, lift up and uh, twist macro switches on older SD lenses. Whereas with the more modern SD lenses and HD lenses with the push button and then you can rotate, those ones are fine when using the doubler and without uh, to be able to engage the macro mode. So that's just something to be aware of if you're using an older SD lens and uh, shooting in Super 35 and using the doubler for sensor coverage. On an older lens, you may not be able to use the macro switch um, in that mode. Super 16 though, you can definitely use the macro switch if you're not using the doubler on there as older lenses. Newer lenses, you can use it on both modes. Just something to be aware of. Another side note to note is that older SD lenses, uh, the servo motor is ever so slightly slower than the slightly newer SD lenses. Um, these ones are a bare fraction of a second faster. And then your HD and um, and then your HD and 4K lenses just from using them in the past. They're about the same speed as this, maybe a hair faster again, but they're much quieter. So you can actually like do a snap zoom with the servo and it's not super loud. Whereas this one um, on the internal mic uh, or the scratch mic on the camera uh, or top mic, uh, you'd be able to pick up the servo noise. 
uh, whereas on the HD and 4K lenses, uh, the servo is much more quiet. And I found the um, slightly newer SD lenses to have a perfectly fast servo zoom for my applications. Uh, so yeah, I don't think anybody will be wanting a much faster zoom than that. Another honorable mention of uh, good equipment to go with a broadcast lens is a 12 pin to DTAP to LANC converted uh, cable as well. Um, it's very expensive for a cable, uh, but just the usability of being able to press the um, native lenses uh, record button and have it record in camera uh, was very useful to do. The Panasonic version of that cable is significantly cheaper, I believe, whereas the Canon and Sony one is, um, yeah, expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just nice to be able to um, not have to reach up and hit the button on the camera, which was actually just by my ear. Uh, much easier to just have that cable plugged in to um, the 12 pin and then come out as a lank um, and be able to hit start and stop on the um, lens like I'd normally do. It's very good muscle memory. Um, and then the RET button also works. Um, it triggers custom button 4 on the FS7. So um, I'm not sure what it does for other cameras, but for the FS7, it triggers custom button 4. So it might trigger a custom button um, on your camera if you're using something different. But yeah, that was handy as well. Okay, so wrapping up, which lenses am I going to hang on to and use into the future? Uh, it's going to be the Canon J21x um, SD lens, just because it's got that 21 by range, it's got the doubler as well. Uh, shooting in Super 16, you get, um, yeah, 42 uh, by worth of range, uh, which is just very useful. Um, it's not the best lens out of all the tests, um, but the extra range is more useful than the slightly lower image quality. I also prefer the Canon lenses over the Fuji lenses, um, so that's why this one. And also reminds me of the zoom range I had when I was shooting TV, uh, as it's pretty similar. I think I had a 22 or a 24 by on my broadcast camera, um, and obviously that was the TV stations. Um, and it was a HD or 4K lens. I can't afford that. Um, they're very expensive, the 22 by HD and 4K lenses. Uh, so a 21 by SD is um, good enough for my uses at the moment. And when I become rich and win the lottery, I might get a HD or 4K uh, 22 by or something. And no surprise, I will keep a hold of the uh, Canon HJ 21 by Cine version. Um, yeah, just supreme image quality and um, very enjoyable to use despite its weight. Um, very front heavy lens, but it was very enjoyable to use and the image quality definitely shines um, significantly lower CA than um, all the other lenses tested. Uh, basically, very, basically non existent CA in this one, unless it's like really hard lighting situations. So yeah, I'm going to hold on to the SD 21 by the HD 21 by Cine, and I'll probably continue using the 16 by uh, till it sells, just because, yeah, super fun lens to use. Um, use it as a B-cam, or uh, if I just need something to roam uh, around in and have to go handheld for a long period of time, the 16 is pretty good for that. So yeah, that's the wrap up of all the uh, broadcast lens tests um, and some little nuggets of wisdom I share with you throughout there. Um, if you've got any questions, post them down below. Um, I'll try and answer them in the comments. Otherwise, I might make a video on those questions. Um, if you found this interesting, found it informative, uh, if you learned something new, hit the like button. It helps get this out to more people. Very useful to be able to uh, get information out to more people who are interested in B4 lenses. And of course, more content coming out like this. So if you'd like to see more, uh, maybe hit subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.